Welcome to this presentation on using inertia relief in ANSYS Workbench Mechanical Finite Element Models. Let's look at the purpose of inertia relief in a static analysis done in ANSYS. As a simple example, consider a vertical rocket that has more than enough thrust to lift it off the Earth and make it accelerate upward toward the sky. If you create a static FEA model, you could apply upward thrust force or a pressure in the correct direction on that model that will cause it to accelerate upward. You have to overcome gravity load as well. Without inertia relief techniques, you'd have to manually calculate what the acceleration of the rocket would be in a static analysis, considering the weight with gravity the total mass of the object, the force that's going in, and how much force is left over after the weight is taken into account, and find out the acceleration. Then the sum of gravity plus acceleration should be a force that balances the applied thrust. In an FEA model, if you're going to avoid rigid body motion, you'd have to constrain a node in that upward direction, so that the global stiffness matrix will not be singular. The reaction at that constrained node should be zero if the acceleration applied to the model is just the right number. Now calculating that acceleration and getting a zero reaction will be taken care of automatically if you turn on inertia relief in Workbench Mechanical and in ANSYS in general. Let's take a look at a simplified example. Not a rocket but a flat plate with a circular imprint in the exact center of this rectangle. We have a net force on here applied with a pressure. It's just on the circular imprint and the net force exceeds the weight of this plate. Suppose this structure is free to move in space. We would like to run a static analysis, not a transient, we don't want any vibration, we just want to see that steady state situation, even though the thing would be accelerating upward. We are considering that the acceleration is smooth. So here's the note. In this example, the pressure is perfectly centered, there are no moments. If we have inertia relief turned on in a structure like this, to get an accurate result, we want the mass properly represented. We want just enough constraint to prevent free body translation and rotation. We want the correct loads, and especially we have to turn on inertia relief right here at the bottom right. So it's a static structural analysis. We click on Analysis Settings, go into the details, down under Solver Controls, request inertia relief. The other conditions have to be met and we'll come to a constraint in a moment. Inside the ANSYS mechanical APDL run that's done in batch in the background, an ANSYS command IRLF for inertia relief will be executed. This will be taken care of automatically for you in Workbench Mechanical when you turn on this row. If you go into the ANSYS help system, there are some conditions and limitations. Let's make ourselves aware of this. First of all, it needs to be a linear static structural analysis. We need just enough constraints to prevent rigid body motions. That'll be a total of six constraints in a 3D model. The sum of reaction forces should be zero when the constraints have been chosen well. The acceleration of the body calculated internally will be based on the element mass matrices and the force that's been put in. Mass has to be properly represented. This means you putting in correct densities for your bodies and perhaps some added masses. During the run, translational and rotational accelerations may be calculated. Our model had a force perfectly centered, but in general the body may be rotating. This is only for linear static structural analysis. 
nonlinearities in the model, also elements operating in a nodal coordinate system, and axisymmetric or generalized plane strain elements are not allowed in this kind of analysis. ANSYS says that models with both 2D and 3D element types, or with symmetry boundary conditions, is not recommended. Loads are input as usual, and displacements and stresses are calculated as usual. These, however, may be with reference to the constrained node that's used. They note that symmetry models are not valid for inertia relief analysis. I'll ask you to think about the need for just enough constraint to prevent rigid body motion and to capture mass properly. Weak springs ought to be turned off for accuracy in your analysis. You don't want them pushing back on your structure. So here's a flat surface body. It was meshed with shell elements. There's a circular imprint. Pressure loads applied here. It will lift the body. The net force is greater than the weight under 1g. We have put a remote displacement in this particular model. It's based on a point at the center of this circle. It's applied to the edge. All we want it to do is prevent this thing from moving around freely in three dimensions. So the remote point is constrained in all six of the translations and rotations. In addition, we've set that perimeter's behavior, the edge, to be deformable. Because we know that with this thing accelerating upward, the plate will curve. So we do not want the behavior here to be rigid. Here's the kind of deformation that might be expected with that force on the circle in the center. The acceleration of this plate is such that things are just balanced. You can learn about the reaction where you have your constraint by going into the text output. You can see a force at a center of mass there's the net force. And you can see the translational acceleration. And in this model, it exists only in the y direction, that vertical direction. ANSYS has calculated this acceleration so that mass times acceleration for the model and the force of gravity is going to equal the thrust that was put in there. Note virtually zero acceleration in all directions except the y-axis because the pressure was centered. The force reaction that we're going to see will be virtually zero. Let's turn the page. We can put in probes to find force and moment reaction. Here's the force reaction. Note the numbers are virtually zero. Remember that ANSYS uses double precision arithmetic, so you'd expect numbers in this range and on the right, moment reactions, and these two are virtually zero in comparison to the numbers generally in the model. That's a quality control check that the inertial relief model is working properly. In conclusion, Workbench Mechanical will support inertia relief just as the full mechanical APDL does. It's for static structural analysis if certain conditions are met. As a user, you do have to turn on inertia relief under analysis systems in that static run, and you have to put in just enough constraint that rigid body motions are not available. You should see reaction forces and moments that are virtually zero, and you can discover the structure accelerations that the force imbalances have caused if you go looking inside the output text listing. Let's have a quick look at the model that was used. We have just one body with a circular imprint in the center of this rectangle. You can see a thickness was applied. There's the meshing control, and here's the resulting mesh. Under Analysis Settings, we open up Solver Controls right here and to make sure that inertia relief is turned on. We have 1g of Earth gravity, and it's pulling in the down direction. You'll want to assure 
the direction is correct. We've put a pressure in here. You can see that the arrow shows the direction in which the pressure is pushing. And we've had to put a minus sign on the pressure in order to get the arrow pointing where we want it. And finally, we want to prevent free translation and rotation in space. We create a remote displacement for this particular model. In some models it would be nodal displacements. We've zeroed out all of the six movements, translation and rotation, and we've made sure that the remote point is centered on that circle, and you can see virtually zero numbers here for its location. There's the deformation, and if I look at the deformation of just the circle, you can see that the deformability of the perimeter has allowed this circle to bend along with the surrounding structure. Here's a directional deformation going straight up. You'll notice that acceleration plus gravity is bending much of this structure down relative to the remote point. There's our state of stresses. Here's the force reaction, which you see is virtually zero, and the moment reaction is virtually zero. So there's the resulting model with inertia relief so that we get the effect of this thing accelerating upward in space, but it's done in a static structural model with no vibration. Thanks for joining us.